It's official. Brian Ferentz is out as the offensive coordinator at Iowa. We break it down today. Locked on Hawkeyes. You are Locked on Hawkeyes, your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in. I'm Trent Condon, and this is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We're available wherever you get podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube. While you're there, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Helps us get in front of more Hawkeye fans. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy with prize picks. Well, let's get into it. And the rumors and rumblings have been out there over the last, oh, 48 hours or so as we come to you late here on Monday afternoon. So what normally happens over the course of a normal football week after the game on Saturday, Instant Reaction Podcast, then Sunday night into Monday morning, I record then the Monday podcast, if you will. It happened on Sunday night and perusing some social media and my favorite Hawkeye message board, Halo, come across a little nugget from the infamous Doug Bader and saying that Brian Ferentz is out. All right. Well, that changes things and certainly would change the complexion. So I said, all right, we'll do it Monday morning. Monday morning comes, the rumors and rumblings become higher and higher. So we waited and waited and waited, and we're still getting here on the Monday. So a little bit different than normal, and apologies if you're ready and get ready for that Monday show each and every morning on your drive-in or your drive home. will be a little bit different this week, but because of the bye week and coupled with these rumors and the rumblings that have been out there, we just, we had to wait. And it became official on Monday afternoon, about 2.30. A uh, press release came from the University of Iowa from... Beth Getz, stating what many of us have been hoping for for a very long time, Brian Ferentz is out as the offensive coordinator for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Here is from the statement, and I think it's very interesting. The statement comes from Beth Getz. It does not come from the football offices. There is nothing from Kirk Ferentz. This is a loan from the interim athletic director. Quote, Anyone who loves Iowa football recognizes both the success and challenges that have brought attention to our program this season. Our struggles on offense, coupled with the offensive coordinator's contract, make this a unique situation. After conversations with head coach Kirk Ferentz, coach Brian Ferentz, and President Wilson, I informed Brian that our intention is for him to be with us through the bowl game, but this is his last season with the program. Making this known today is the best interest of the program and its loyal loyal fans. It provides clarity during this pivotal time in the schedule, quote unquote. There it is from Beth Getz. And thank goodness for the first time in 18 years, the University of Iowa has an adult running the athletic department. No more kowtowing to the head coaches. No more demanding answers and then not getting thing in response. They have an adult leading the charge now in Beth Getz. And after this statement, after this ability to rid yourself of the cancer that has been Brian Ferentz trying to run an offense, getting rid of it in the fashion that she did, take off the interim tag, make her right now the permanent athletic director. When she got the interim role, I was very much a proponent of this needing to be a national search. The University of Iowa, the athletic department, a top 15 uh, revenue-generating athletic department in the country, one of the best jobs in the country, in the continued gulf that we're seeing grow between the Big Ten, the SEC, and everybody else. This is one of only 34 of those jobs now in the future of college athletics, University of Iowa. And I didn't want them just to take the easy way out. This isn't taking the easy way out. This is hiring the best person. This is hiring the person that, no doubt about it, had the gumption to go out and do the right thing. No more nepotism. No more garbage. No more hiding behind family. Get the job done. Brian Ferentz had not done the job well in three years. And because of that, he needed to be gone. He should have been gone after 2021, even more after 2022. And we're not even going to allow this to fester. That is a leader. That is a professional. That is somebody that you want leading your athletic department. Beth Getz, kudos to you. 
This whole conversation starts with the interim athletic director. She did it right. She was the adult, something that Gary Barta could not do. We talked about all the missteps that he had as an athletic director and all the times that he didn't do his job correctly. But most importantly, he also never had the ability to stand up for what is right. And as his way out, his parting gift was his asinine contract and what they put in there with the 25 points per game. It was a joke then. It's still a joke today. And Beth Getz became the adult, and she once again walked in there and did the right thing. It doesn't matter if they get to 25 points per game. That's not what this conversation is about. What it's about is having somebody competent running your offense. And they didn't have it. And if it was anybody other than Brian Ferentz, they wouldn't have been given 2023. But here we are. So she stepped up. She did the right thing. And be happy and grateful and hopeful that she becomes the full-time athletic director. Because to do that, with an interim tag hanging in the balance, with a job like this hanging in the balance, to go there and go do the right thing is not an easy thing. There are a lot of people in a lot of walks of life that would not have done that. And she did. Kudos to Beth Getz. Tip of the ball cap. That was amazing to do this. So how do we get to this point? How do we sit here? And how does this play out? Why do we have to have a press release? Well, very simply, this has been out there. Now, this is something that over the weekend apparently came to a head. And there were growing frustrations inside the football offices as the offense become became worse and worse and worse throughout the years. Now, you go back, they had some nice moments early in Brian's tenure. Now, it wasn't fruitful all the time. There were terrible inconsistencies, and that was a big problem. Probably the biggest one is you go back to the historic win, 55-24 against Ohio State, and after scoring 54 against the Buckeyes the following week, you put 66 yards of total offense up against Wisconsin. That was the inconsistency. And the inconsistency was frustrating, yes. However, they didn't even have the high water marks here over the last three years. It just cratered more and more and more. And it was almost like he was gun shy. He couldn't see his way out of it. And there's times where you hear this and you hear that you know, rider's block and things like that. Maybe he had play calling block. I don't know what it was, but it went from bad to even worse over these last couple of seasons. Blame the players. Blame the attrition. Blame the offensive line. Look, they came to this year. They were selling us again that this offensive line was going to be better. Did you see it? Certainly not. Not at the level that anybody hoped for. That's where we are right now. Now we look to the future. What does this mean for Kirk Ferentz? Kirk Ferentz apparently is not upset. Is very upset, I should say. Is not happy about the way that this played out, which shouldn't come as a surprise. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the head man. What's next? What Iowa needs to do? Who are some names to look at? Oh, we got a lot here as we roll through. This is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Today's episode of Locked On Hawkeyes is brought to you by Athletic Brewing. Well, you want a cold one, but yeah, maybe do it a little bit different. Athletic Brewing is the way to do it. It's time for our Game Changer of the Week. That's what we do each and every week here with Athletic Brewing Company. Now, normally, game week, pretty easy, right? You find that Game Changer here. We're going off the board. Beth Getz is our game changer of the week. That's right. Beth Getz, she completely changed our conversation on Iowa football and athletic brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. Their brews are great tasting and award winning. They beat out full strength beers in global competitions. And they're constantly releasing limited edition experimental styles to add to their variety Fit for all times, watching a big game or your kid's game, tackling a work or tackling a workout. No hangovers ever. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you, or you can buy them online at athleticbrewing.com. And if you're a first-time customer, use code LOCKEDON. That's going to get you 15% off your first order. Again, code LOCKEDON, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. At checkout, that will get you 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. Today's episode is also brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, 
eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exact, exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Trent Connor back with you again on the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Lockdown Hawkeyes your first listen every single day. So here we go. And now we look towards the future. We know that Brian Ferentz will continue on as the offensive coordinator. We will get more information tomorrow after the press conference. Players scheduled to meet at 11 o'clock as they normally do on game week on Tuesdays. And then at 145 is when we will hear from Kirk Ferentz. Well, we hear from Brian. Doubtful, but a possibility. They've also been having those coaches uh, press conferences over Zoom on Wednesdays. Could that be a possibility? Very well could be the case. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, though, Kirk was not pleased about this. Uh, Kirk is not somebody that fires people in season. We have never seen that happen during his 25 years as the head coach at the University of Iowa. It's not something that he believes in. He believes in, we'll play out the whole schedule and then we will evaluate from there. That's not the way things are done in today's environment, as we've seen across the country, where coaches have been fired in season in multiple places, all over the place. That's not the case here. He will continue on this role. And the one thing I think that needs to be said is you look at the way that that press release that we talked about earlier from Beth Getz was laid out. You did not see the term resignation. And I think that's an important caveat because this was for all intents and purposes, a firing. And though, yes, his contract will not be renewed, that's what this is. This is a firing. This is not a resignation. And it goes to show you that Brian Ferentz was going to continue to double down. And likely with it, Kirk Ferentz was probably going to continue to double down. I mean, that's what we're learning more and more about this situation, is Kirk couldn't see the forest through the trees. And if some of the speculation that is out there that Kirk's upset about this is true, it leads you to wonder how long is he for the role as the head coach? You know, what is he going to do and what does he think about the future of this and if it's worth sticking on anymore? He'll have a new athletic director that he will have to not only deal with, but work with. And that's somebody that he could perhaps bully around like he could in the past with Gary Barta. Beth Getz has shown that she has teeth. Beth Getz has shown that she understands the future of college athletics. Beth Getz has shown that she is willing to go out there and do the difficult thing, something that a predecessor wasn't willing to do. And is Kirk, nearing 70 years old, does he want to deal with that? I mean, we hear often about clashes and back and forth between athletic directors and coaches of all walks. And if that's something that maybe Kirk believes is going to happen, is that something that he even wants to deal with at this point in his career? I think that is something that definitely has to be looked at and what that's going to be. If Kirk does remain, if he decides, yes, I'm going to make it a go. I don't want this to be my lasting legacy. I want to go out one more time. I want to see the future of the Big Ten. I want to go through and see what it is. Maybe I can put together a team to get into the top 12 in the new college football playoff. Make a run again. He wants to do that. Well, he's going to have to work. But how willing is he to be hands-off offensively? Look, if I was going to get this right, and for argument's sake, Kirk Ferentz stays on. He decides he's not going to retire after the season. He's going to make it a go. He's going to continue in the contract that he has for another five seasons. He's going to continue down that path. All right. If that's the case, is he going to hand the reins off? Because I hear this a ton, and I argue with people about it often. Well, it's just Kirk's offense. It's not. It's not just Kirk's offense. Because what you've seen the last couple of seasons is nothing close to the offense that Ken O'Keefe ran. It's nothing close to the offense that Greg Davis had. Now, what you do have is a certain structure, basic tenets of Kirk Ferentz philosophy that is always going to be baked in. And I get that part, but this is not the Kirk Ferentz offense because you've seen three different offensive coordinators do it three completely different ways. So that's not true. It's just not. The tenets remain the same. Ball control, run the football, 50-50, pro-style offense. Yes, those are there. But as we've seen, zone blocking, 
does not work anymore. Certainly outside zone blocking in today's college football with the change of rules doesn't work. They adapted. It took too long, but they got there. Say they go out and hire, I think, the apple of many people's eye, might include it, Ryan Grubb, kid from Northwest Iowa, played football at Buena Vista. He was a coach up at Northwest Missouri, or uh, at Sioux Falls, uh, up, in, uh, up in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Been all over the place with Kalen DeBoer, now at Washington. He's been the offensive coordinator with the Huskies, and you've seen what they've been able to do. He's an Iowa guy, an Iowa native, and he's going to do things differently. If I was willing to go out, and it's going to cost money, it's going to cost two and a half, three, maybe $4 million to get an offensive coordinator of that ilk. Andy Ludwig from Utah. Those kind of people. To go out and hire those kind of offensive coordinators, is Kirk Ferentz, again, willing to step back? Because Kirk, during meetings, he's not working with the defense. He's working with the offense. That's where he is. He's an offensive line guy. That's where he made his living. That's where he grew up throughout the ranks. And he is an offensive guy. If you go out and hire one of those young guns, or not even a young gun, just somebody that's competent offensively, that's going to command that kind of paycheck, is Kirk, again, at this point in his career, willing to step back, take his tenets out of it, what he believes is the true way to play winning football, and let them do that. That's what he does to Phil Parker. And look how well that has gone. That's what he does with LeVar Woods in special teams. And look how well that has gone. At this point, Kirk, getting up there in H, can he step back offensively and allow the new offensive coordinator to do what they want to do, to hire who they want to hire? That's another piece of this as well. Would you love to see a guy like Liddell Betts stay on? Absolutely. He's done a great job with that running back room. You see they're four deep right now. You're excited about their future. Abdul Hodge has come in. He's working with the tight ends. Yes, you want to see those things, no doubt about it. However, maybe a new offensive coordinator decides they want some different people in there. We will see. I, another interesting note. I had to pass this along. I had to pass this along because I, I just found it absolutely crazy. So the before we got the press release from Beth Getz today, we get the email with the game notes for each and every week, and we get it every week. So, of course, I open it up right away and scroll down to see, is there any change in the depth chart? Is there an or listed behind the quarterback? And there was nothing. No change in the depth chart. And as I was scrolling through there, I saw they also still had all the coaches listed as they do. It's about, I don't know, 40, 50 pages of these game notes that they send out every single week. And one of them just has each of the coaches, their headshots. You know, they put them up on TV, whatever it is. And, well, I saw Brian was still there. Okay. And the other thing that I noticed is Iowa only has one of their official coaches. Now, they have analysts. They have different people at different levels that are up in the booth. But one actual on-field coach, if you will, that counts as the 10 coaches on the field. Only one offensive and one defensive coach is even up in the booth. I, I don't know if that is reality for a lot of coaches out there, but certainly feels like Brian's rare as it pertains to being an offensive coordinator on the field. Normally, I, I would say certainly over half of coaches are up in the booth when they make the call. Not all the time. I get that. But but that aside, I just found that very odd as I was trying to find some information and, and nothing came out of that. Well, speaking of that depth chart, Deacon Hill is listed as the starter. There's a game this week. This Iowa football team is still 6-2. and two. This football team could still get to Indianapolis. There's still a ton on the table. We'll talk about that as we continue. This is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Today's episode of Locked On Hawkeyes is brought to you by Prize Picks. I love Prize Picks. It has been so much fun with daily fantasy sports. The easiest and most exciting way for DFS is just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, you got pros in there. You got sharks. You got people. They got these algorithms and they're spitting things out. No, it's just you against the numbers. You just pick more or less then between two and six player stat projections, and then you watch the winnings roll in. Prize picks, it's so much fun to play, and you just take a look around. It's very simple. Will a guy have more or less? Tonight, let's go with Jared Goff. More or less, 235 yards passing. Very simple, right? Let's go very simple with David Montgomery tonight. More or less, one and a half touchdowns in the game. That's what you do. You put them together. The more players that you add there, the more money that you can make. And Prize Picks has their reboot policy. 
your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For NFL games and college to- uh, football top 25 matchups, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and doesn't come back in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sp- sports platform with these kind of injury insurances in there. Absolutely love what they're doing at Prize Picks. And right now, go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown college. Use the code lockdown college for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash lockdown college and use the code lockdown college for that first deposit match up to a $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Trent kind of back with you one final time on the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast. So with all this, yes, there's a game this week. Oh, yeah, they're still going to play football. Uh, going to do it at Wrigley Field, which is going to be cool. I'll be there. I'll be doing my radio show Friday until 1 o'clock at Merkel's, the Hawkeye Bar in Wrigleyville. Then about 2 o'clock with Sean Daniels and myself. We'll be getting together here for Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast. So make sure to stop on out. Should be a lot of fun. I've um, already been told there's going to be a few Hawkeye greats that are going to be making their way to Merkel's over a Friday and Saturday, maybe some tight ends, maybe a guy that's currently in the league that is playing for the team playing tonight. I, maybe we'll see on that front. Dallas Clark, he might be there too. So um, come on up. We'll be at Merkel's going to be a great time there. Barntown Brewing. Uh, if you're somebody in the Des Moines area across the state, you know about all the great brews that they put together. Going to be a really fun party. Going to have a good time there. Stop by, say hello, shake some hands. We'll talk some Hawks and, have a really good time. Heck, maybe I'll even throw a headset and a microphone on you if we're uh, having a good time during both that. Do that on Friday and then a pregame on Saturday here on the Lockdown Hawkeyes feed. But yes, there is a game. And I'll tell you, watch a lot of Northwestern uh, Maryland. I got the BTN and 60. I'm going to break that down uh, a little bit later for a podcast later in the week too. Because Northwestern, we thought this was of all 12 games, this felt like the most surefire win during the summer. After Fitz was let go, It just looked like after the struggles that they'd had the last couple of years, this is going to be dead team walking. And Coach Braun comes in, kind of a newer coach, comes in from North Dakota State, didn't know about uh, all the extracurriculars that are apparently happening inside the Northwestern program. He gets thrown to Wolves at Big Ten Media Day. You just felt terrible for him, right? He's answered the bell, and he's got this team believing. And what they did, from what I watched against Maryland, they were highly impressive. This team can move the football. They're moving up and down the field. You know, they're going to be jacked up for the game. And a possibility that this Northwestern team, their over-under win total coming into the year was two and a half. Oh, they've already succeeded that as they got four victories already this season. And they're talking bowl game. Now, to get to a bowl game, they likely, this might be half to one they put in the win column. But are they scared about this Hawkeye team? They shouldn't be. Absolutely not. They're moving the ball up and down the field. And can Iowa do anything to move it? So another rumor that has been out there is that Joe Labus has been getting more run during practice. I don't know if that's the case. I don't have that verified by any means. Don't be going to run in that. I'm reporting this. Don't go to X or social media or anything like that. I'm not reporting that, but I did hear from somebody over there that he was getting more reps with the first team. What does that mean? Very well could just be they had a bye week and then everybody's going to get some more reps. But that aside, look, we've seen Deacon Hill. God bless the young man. He's just not a very good quarterback. And I don't think there's anything certainly that can be done in season that's going to change that. His mechanics are wonky. He is loose with the football. He's putting it on the turf. He has the most turnover-worthy plays in college football this season for anybody with more than 75 attempts passing this year. He's a walking turnover machine coupled with a guy that isn't very accurate and hasn't been able to make any plays up the field. That is not exactly a recipe for success. I think Iowa needs to make a move. And though the likelihood is that Joe Labus is out the door, look, if you can't get a shot with this offense, you can understand why he would. If you're going to do that, though, if you're going to give Labus the job, here's what you need to do. You need to take it another level. Not only does Joe Labus need to be the starter and get a pretty long leash. I mean, you got to see here if even he can be a backup next season behind Cade McNamara. But secondly, if it doesn't go well, you can't just go back to Deacon Hill. He's not the guy. It's not going to happen for Deacon Hill. It just isn't. He doesn't have the requisite talent to be a Big Ten quarterback. He's got a strong arm. You need more than that. And he does not appear to to have the qualities necessary to be that guy. But then your backup needs to be, you go Joe Labus as a starter, it needs to be Marco Lyonez. Same thing. 
even if Labus is out the door, and even if he you know, plays relatively well, it sounds like he's gone. Okay, so be it. That's the case. You also need to figure out if Marco Linus, at minimum, could be a backup himself next season behind Cade McNamara, knowing that Cade McNamara has been an injury risk now for four straight years, knowing that he's been banged up all throughout his career. And if Linus is not a competent backup, and you see that in a limited role here the rest of the season, then you go and you say, we need to go to the portal and also find a backup. That is the reality of the way this goes. And it sucks because you're still playing for something. You're still playing for a division championship. You're still playing to get to Indianapolis. And maybe uh, with the shackles off, and we'll see all of a sudden Brian Ferentz start to look a little bit better calling games. Those scripted plays that have been very good. Maybe that brain block we were talking about a little bit earlier, where he's got you know the writer's block, except as it comes to a play color. Maybe that disappears now without this hanging over his head. Who knows? But boy. If they can just get competent, we will see. We'll see with the quarterback situation. According to the depth chart, though, more of the same. We will continue to break this down from all different angles. Again, Friday at Merkel's is the spot to be as we'll be broadcasting live there from Friday afternoon. About 2 o'clock is when we'll get started with that one and a whole lot more coming up this week. More tomorrow. It is press conference day. Players at 11 o'clock. 1.45, we'll hear from Kirk Ferentz. We will react to that. Business set to stop by. We got a lot going on there. It's a busy time, and basketball, men's basketball, starts tonight with their first exhibition game. We got you covered on that front. Yeah, we're going to talk some hoops, too, here on Locked On Hawkeyes. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. Always fun, and uh, what a show it was today. Thanks for joining us, as always. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Go Hawks.